When I bought my Porsche 928 just a year ago, it came in a hell of a state. Damaged by the transporter, but even then a car that has suffered years of deferred maintenance. I justified it to myself by saying that I had a driver's car and that it therefore doesn't really matter. But then I set about fixing things and we're some way down that road. The paint, however, was always a big question mark. And I have reservations as to what we can really do with this car. The paintwork is really not great in my opinion. Uh, so I'm not sure whether this is going to make any difference, but today this is the detailing video. We are going to detail this car from beginning to end. We're going to correct the paint, we're going to compound, we're going to polish. And when I say we, I don't mean me. I mean precise details of New Hampshire. That's the name of their company. Sean and Doug were here before. You'll recall in an earlier video looking at my car. And now is the time to see whether they can really detail this car to any great level. I'm very cynical, very skeptical about the whole thing. But I'm giving this channel over to Sean and Doug and they'll take it from here. Over to you guys. Welcome back to the channel. So without further ado, let's wash. quick science lesson about paint. So uh, there's multiple levels, right? I think most people know. You've got metal, and you've got a primer, and you have a paint, and then you have a clear coat. And the clear coat is typically uniform at the factory. It has a thickness but over time, um, it's soft. It's designed to be a sacrificial layer to a degree to protect the color of the paint. And so oftentimes you'll get molecules of dirt, iron, as it's commonly, typically called iron fallout, will just get embedded in the paint. And Sean's using a clay bar to remove those contaminants from the paint. Ooh, that sounds dirty. Yeah. That's a quarter of the roof. Well, that's fun. So now we've got the car all clayed and, you know, typically we do another inspection of the paint after that because now you've gotten all the impurities or as much as you can out of the paint um, and you've got sort of a clean canvas to use an art term, right? So now we're going to just take a look at um, what it actually looks like uh, once all the dirt and grime and everything is off. So when we made the video with Jay originally. We were talking about how the, the front of the nose was resprayed because of the damage during delivery. And you can clearly see some of that damage uh, or some of that repair. If you follow the light line across the hood, you can see the ripples in the paint. That's the blending line um, from the body shop. So they, uh, you know, quite frankly, didn't do a great job um, with that. And Jay kind of knows that. But you can see some of the deep scratches that are in the surface. Um, and those are actually from the, the, the body shop process, right? So those spots that are catching the light, that should be completely smooth mirror finish. Um, and those are sanding marks left behind by their um, rotary polisher. Or those could even be hand marks because they're so straight. Um, and then here in the hood, you could see, um, you know, those are lo like love marks from somebody washing the car. Um, could be an automatic car wash or, you know, someone aggressively washing by hand. This, this kind of action here is typical of, you know, the back and forth or the swirling motion of a car wash. So that's probably what that is. Um, so there's a lot of that. You know, the, the, um, the roof is particularly bad. Um, I'm just going to have to catch the light to see it. But um, that's all. This is all damage in the paint. <laughs> Finished 
finished with compound on the hood and it's I would say miraculous so if you look you can see kind of a mirror finish here and then if we track over watch the light it gets fuzzy you can see the blemishes in the paint clear fuzzy car almost looks like a different color from side to side Aficionados know that there's carpeting on the doors of these cars and Sean extracted them. That's what that looks like. Yippee. We were just talking about pads and I mentioned the blue foam pad and the Griot's fast correcting pad. So I did a little shootout um, over here on the roof. And so I mentioned that the blue pad tends to uh, be a little more aggressive and it leaves marks. And so if you watch the light, you can see some of the marks that were left by that pad. That was by the pad. Anything swirly looking, pigtails, it's hard to pick up. There's another one right there. Now this half of, this half of the trunk or the roof, I use the Griot's pad and as you can see, I mean, there's, there's excellent clarity and there are still some scratches, but those were scratches that were not induced by the pad. They were just there before. So right now, Sean's gonna use a steamer to clean the intake. He's started already. So you can see this section right here. This area has been compounded. There was a nice uh, scrape along here that came out really nicely. Sorry for my fingers. Um, I've done some touch-ups here and I'll clean that up. That's just a little bit of compound stuck in the touch-up. Um, I'll clean that out with a little prep spray. Um, but results are very good. Um, the other area that Jay was very concerned with is this. Um, so we've managed to get it level um, and I don't know if you can really see that, but it was blobbed up pretty bad. Um, I did a little wet sand and you can see I got right through the touch up into the old, um, touch up paint. So what I'm going to do is put a light coat, try to make that little, uh, chip disappear. And then it is nice and flat. So, um, it's definitely more level than it was. Now I just got to get a little bit more color on it. I've kind of been grinding on that pretty hard. I want to make sure that we, I think we can do much better than how these look currently. I think we can brighten them up dramatically and which will make a huge difference as the cars uh, coming towards you. Okay, so I wanted to give you some results after compounding those lights. I took the trim piece off and I'll show you that it was, uh, this piece was okay. Uh, this inner piece was broken. So I have a little uh, glue and clamp working over on the side. Um, so Sean's working now on coating the trim with ceramic um, using G-Technique C4 trim and uh, the car is fully polished now um, sort of at its final at its final correction if you will so now we're just kind of doing the kind of finishing touch as you can see the the difference between what's coated and what's not and it's not going to keep all that you know shiny yeah, it won't be super glossy, but it'll be black again. 
Yeah, it'll soak in to the rubber a bit and it'll make it look sort of the deep black that it looked when it was from the factory. And it should stay like that a good long while. You can see the wing actually, the, the rear spoiler has been done as well. And you remember how faded and gray this was and now it's, it's a deep rich black. So prior to the coating, we need to do a complete alcohol prep, uh, prep spray wipe down and that's to help the coating adhere properly to the paint and make sure that any wax or oils from the polishes um, have all been diminished and there's nothing left on the paint. It's just naked paint at that point. So we're getting ready to um, begin applying the ceramic coating to Jay's 928. Um, so we only use uh, Kamikaze products for our coatings. In our opinion, they are simply the best in terms of looks, um, durability, and just uh, it has the warmness of wax, while at the same time giving you the durability of ceramic coating. Um, you'll see once we start to lay it down, but everything will get coated. Um, the first coat of Miyabi is basically best for paint only, um, and that's the first layer of coating, the Kamikaze Miyabi. That's best for paint only, and then the ISM, which is the topper, can actually go on any of the rubber surfaces minus the tires um, any of the trim can be recoded but I, i've already used a permanent trim restorer so i won't go to that length but i have the headlights up so i can get um, the headlight buckets i can get the inside molding of the headlight um, i will coat all of the glass the tail lights everything gets coated um, we want to give it the best protection and we've you know we've worked really hard to get it to this point so we want to make sure that that finish is locked in Okay, so we've applied our first layer of Miyabi. Um, you can see the line. Uh, I hope you can see the line. I can see the line. Um, and I'll just basically let that sit on the surface for anywhere from a minute to a minute and a half. It'll start to rainbow, which you can sort of make out on the edge here. Um, it's starting to rainbow. Um, and that lets me know that it's time to take it off. Um, and then we'll keep proceeding. John has started the coating process um, of the top coat, which is Kamikaze ISM. And uh, ISM you apply in one direction. So some coatings you'd apply in a crosshatch pattern, which actually we do with Kamikaze Miyabi, which is the base coat. Um, earlier today, um, the base coat was put on and then left to cure for about two hours and then we um, top it with ISM for additional gloss. And as you can see, if you look closely, the coating is starting to flash. So uh, once it starts to flash, we just wipe. And then it, it'll take about 24 hours to cure and then it needs to sit for about a week um, without being washed. <laughs> we compounded the entire car to help you as compounded well. it three times three times Yikes. okay I think I mean, the first yeah. first day of polishing um, I was still working on the interior and Doug spent probably six or seven hours just on the hood and how many hours have you done on the car in all 54 
Oh, you timed it. 54. We yeah. wrote, tracked it. We did 54 and then 28 pads, I think. 28 pads we 28 used pads. in total. I mean, when we were with you in Connecticut, one of the things you talked about was the roof yeah. and all the scratches on the roof. And you look at the roof yeah. now and, and they're gone. Douglas like did amazing work on the roof. It's just, it's just perfect. Yeah. And then this <clears throat> sort of weird spot that was, yeah, it's still there. It's, you can, you can still, still see, see that bit, line, but, but it's, it's come out really well. Dramatically better. Yeah, you can it just see the line here. Yeah. Remember it had like that sandpapery feel? Yeah. Now it, that's gone. It's smooth. Yeah. That away. That's a million times better than it was. Yeah. And the wheels, I mean, they, it, to me, it looked like they didn't, they've never had any love. No, they've never, the barrels, I don't think, were ever cleaned and I remember your, the first time you went to Matt, the, yeah. the young mechanic, yeah. he uh, said that the rack was leaking and all the power steering fluid was in the wheels. <laughs> oh, okay, that's why it had gone, okay, yeah. You didn't but, lose it, we found it. We yeah, found, found it, it yeah. yeah. <laughs> but look at these wheels. I mean, those are just amazing. They look like they've been resprayed. they really do. And now they're coated as well, so they will stay like that. Wow. They're, you know, <clears throat> have to nerd out a little bit so like did your gas cap look like that before oh my god <laughs> <laughs> yeah we disassembled that sean took it all apart soaked this and abc cleaned it up cleaned it yeah wow. it was like i know I it's like the, the door i love it yeah. yeah i know we sent you pictures of that but that was like we were like wow yeah that gave us the first clue as to how the rest of the car was going to react yeah, because these polished. were badly scratched. Yeah. Like people's fingernails yeah. had gone in. And, well, um, guys, I'm absolutely blown away. And I honestly, I cannot thank you enough. I did not think, I was, I was quite cynical and a bit skeptical about the whole thing. And you've surpassed expectations to the tune of about a million miles. Great. It's really, really come out well. How, if people want to come up and, and, and have this treatment done by you guys, how do they find you? Precise details... Uh, Precise Details, New Hampshire. And there's the website over there. On, the, on your screen, people, precise-details.com, New Hampshire. And you're, mm -hmm. uh, you're in southern New Hampshire, right? Yes. yes. We're, about, we're about on the border of Massachusetts. Um, so probably 30 minutes north of Boston. Right. Well, I can't recommend you enough to the audience, honestly. I think that what you've done here for a 38, nearly 39-year-old, unloved... 928 is off the scale and thank you both i really really appreciate it guys i hope you've enjoyed this video if you have actually i'd like you to take a look at uh doug and uh, sean's website which is up there as i said uh, and to follow them on instagram as well um, which is on the screen right now more coming on this 928 i have, I have gearbox news that'll be saved for another video um, but if you've enjoyed this, give a guy a like, consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's a manual swap, but maybe it's not. We'll find out. Yes, we'll find out in the next episode. The suspense. <laughs> Thanks for watching.